Injuries have derailed a promising season for the New Orleans Pelicans. So are Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram injury prone? How do we even talk about injuries, let alone evaluate a team that's dealing with them? You might think you know, but you don't. And I've got the data to back it up. Let's take a look in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans. Your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Thursday, maybe a game day for the Pelicans. They may or may not be in Dallas by the time you're listening to this. If there's time, we'll get into that in the third segment of today's show. But I want to talk about injuries today. I want to talk about how we talk about injuries because it's a lot harder than you think. And if you think you know what's going on, I promise you that's wrong and you don't because no one really does. And I'll explain what I mean coming up. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDu- or Prize Pick. Sorry. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com promo code locked on. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, giving you some level headed talk about this team. It's, it's, it's dicey there on social media right now, but I'm giving you my perspective, what I think is going on, and trying to kind of keep things even keeled for the most part. But this is also truly what I believe. Today, we're going to talk about injuries. Talk about talking about injuries. And it's not an easy thing to do. I've said repeatedly the past couple of weeks that when this team is healthy, they are very, very good. I've said that here. I've said it on TV. I've said it on the radio. When healthy is the key. And optimistically, I think they're going to be healthy at the end of the season. Yes, Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, because there's no actual reason to think otherwise. But I do understand why people think you can't count on that. But it's also tough to talk about injuries because there's so much we don't know, right? Brandon Ingram took a while to come back from his toe injury. Zion Williamson missed all of last season, over half his rookie year, and is out through the All-Star break. So they're injury prone, right? Unreliable. Well, maybe, but I lean towards saying no to that because there's so much more we don't know. There's only so much we can say without the rest being entirely conjecture. We don't have the medicals. We don't see their rehab day in, day out. We don't see the imaging. We don't know the pain they are feeling. We don't know their bodies like they do. So when you talk about the team and the injuries and the fact that they're dealing with a lot to key players all at once right now, You know, I think you can look at it from three different angles or need to look at it from three different angles. And that's kind of what we're going to do in today's show. First one being, are these guys just injury prone? Are they weak? Are they not tough? Do they not play through pain, play through injury? The second being, is there something with the medical staff, something going on? Are they not doing a good job? And then three, is it just a fluke and bad injury luck? So let's start with these guys being injury prone. I just talked about it, right? Brandon Ingram has missed a bunch of games before. Zion missed half his rookie year, missed all of last season, is out likely through the all-star break right now. And because of them not being available, the team is on a nine-game losing streak. So are they injury prone? I'm not sure. When you look at the injuries they suffer, are these reoccurring things, right? You know, is it a knee? Is it a foot? You know, Zion's three big injuries in his career so far was the foot injury last year, was the the knee injury his rookie year, and then right now it's a hamstring. Those are all not necessarily related. Brandon Ingram dealt with a hip injury last year. It was a toe injury this year. He broke a finger and required surgery during the offseason while playing through pain in the postseason against the Phoenix Suns. Those aren't reoccurring things. They have blood clots in the past, right? None of those are really reoccurring things. You know, they miss games, yes, but so do most players in the NBA. And Aaron Nelson and the medical staff, their general plan is to hold guys back so there's no risk of reoccurrence. And we'll have more on that in the next segment. So you see all of those injuries 
and just sometimes have to realize they're part of the game. It sucks. Totally sucks. But it's blameless. It's blameless, I think. You know, they just happen. It's like when your significant other is upset and when you offer solutions to them, they get more upset with you, right? Because they just want you to sit down and say it sucks with them. Here, people want to blame something, someone, the players, the med staff, but sometimes things just happen and the situation sucks. It's free relationship advice right there. And there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. And I think some of that is definitely the injuries here. You know, guys wanting to wait till they feel right is kind of the norm in the NBA. I mentioned Derrick Rose and what he went through with the uh, Chicago Bulls after he won his MVP, youngest MVP in the league ever, and then had some devastating knee injuries. And he was medically cleared. He was medically cleared by the team, but wouldn't play because he didn't feel 100% comfortable dunking off of that foot, off of that leg off of that knee. Something just felt off and that was going to impact the way that he played. So he sat out games. And honestly, it was the right choice. The team put pressure on him to try and return. And that wasn't a good look. That also ended up with those guys, you know, the team and the and the player kind of getting a divorce because of it. You know, when there's some thoughts of the team kind of trying to put some pressure on Brandon Ingram, that's the type of thing that can actually create a divide between the player and the team and erode a lot of trust there. When it comes to injuries, there's trust both ways. There's trust from the player that you're going to take care of it and handle it and get him healthy. And then there's trust on the team that the player is being honest and open about what's going on. So if Brandon Ingram says, my body's not ready, I'm still dealing with pain, you kind of have to take that at face value unless you think he's faking it. And I'll ask you this. Do you think Brandon Ingram was faking it? Do you think he's soft? Do you think he's weak for not playing through that injury? Or do you think it was just, it hurt and he wasn't ready to play yet? So it's an open question. There's no right or wrong answer to this sort of thing. But be aware that if you call this guy out, and it's fine to call him out, his play hasn't been good, certainly. But on the injury stuff, that's kind of what you're saying at that point. And that gets into a territory that I personally do not feel very comfortable jumping into. So sometimes... You look at these injuries and they might happen a lot, but it doesn't mean a guy's injury prone and it doesn't say anything to me that it means they're going to not be healthy at the end of the season. Brandon Ingram will be right. He wouldn't be playing right now. Zion Williamson, from what we've heard about the the recovery and the rehab from the hamstring injury, it's going according to plan. According to plan is key. Let's talk about what I mean with that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked on because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to the point spreads to who will score a touchdown those prop bets are what make the super bowl fun i don't really care about either team in there i want to have some fun watching some crazy stuff happen and betting on it and trying to make some money on my guesses here and also doing a little bit of research before the game and the FanDuel sportsbook app is safe secure and super easy to use and best of all you can get paid your winnings instantly so join FanDuel today at fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on super bowl 57 that's fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about the team. We're not just going to yell and scream. There's no point in doing all that. We're going to look at this and try and figure out what's going on. We'll do it together and talk about where the team goes from here and what lessons they're learning that they can hopefully apply towards the end of the season and what will be a playoff push. And while they're falling down in the standings, it, they're also like three games out of the third seat. This isn't, you know, this dramatic turnaround where it's like, oh, they're nowhere in contention anymore. Quickly win two games and you're right back into all of this. So they're still in a very good spot, I think. And that's part of the reason why I am not panicking just yet. So I said, we're looking at three different things here when it comes to injuries, right? Are these guys just injury prone? I think injuries just happen. 
I don't think it's injury prone. You know, when you look at the Pelicans, and here's the first piece of data I want to throw at you, that one season under Stan Van Gundy, where Zion and B.I. played, they played 80% of the teams, it was like 81 point, or it's 80 point like 58% or something, we're rounding up, 81% of the team's games together. That's pretty good. Now, that's the only time they've done that, but it also shows it can be done. Are you going to put more stock into his rookie season, this season, or that year? You know, there's data that says they will be healthy and that they will work together. That's why I also don't think you need data on them playing together. You literally have a season of that where they weren't the issue with everything going on with that team. So you have that. So I don't think there's anything saying they won't be available at the end of the regular season. You don't know either way, just as I don't, but I don't think the data points to that at all. The second part is, is there something going on with the medical staff? And when I was prepping the show, and I, and I do notes before every show, I do it on the little sticky note app on my laptop here, and it's usually like three words for each segment or something. Here, I have like I could turn this into an article with the amount of notes that I have. So first, when I was prepping for the show, I was planning on saying the Pelicans need to do a deep dive on the medical staff. Do a deep dive. This seems to keep happening. What the heck's going on? It's the same thing repeating itself over and over, all of these injuries. Like, do a deep dive, and maybe you need to clean house and bring new people in that are having better luck. But then I actually looked into the numbers and I'm going to tell you something right now. The medical staff is doing a good job. That involves like the training staff, the training, player recovery. It's a catch-all term for kind of like everything on that side. They're doing a good job. You can go to instreetclothes.com. There's a couple of other sites too. Some are paid, some are not, that give you a lot of this data. And when you look at games missed, and there's a couple of ways that you can evaluate this. You can evaluate this just in terms of raw games missed, number of games missed by players. You can also look at it and say, okay, a game missed by Zion is very different than a game missed by Dyson Daniels or Najee Marshall, right? Or even between Zion and Brandon Ingram too, based on their salaries. How many, when you prorate it on a game-to-game -game basis, how much salary are you missing from your games? So you can kind of look at it on a graph like that, number of games missed, salary missed, Pelicans are right in the middle of the pack this season. Exactly in the middle of the pack. Perfectly average when it comes to that. When you look at this over the past couple of seasons, last year wasn't great because Zion missed the whole year, but that had nothing to do with the medical staff, right? That was him working out, broke his foot, just playing. It'll get to kind of what we, we talk about in the next segment of just freak fluke thing. Like, what can you do? Maybe there's some things you can do. We'll talk about that. But it wasn't on the medical staff there. And if you go to the season before that, they did a good job of keeping guys healthy. That Zion and B.I. season where Zion made the All-Star game. B.I. put up numbers the same as his All-Star year. They played 80-81% of the team's games together. Overall, when you go back the past couple of years under Aaron Nelson, they've done a good job of keeping guys healthy healthy and New Orleans has not always been one of those teams in the top five of games missed they've been around league average you live with that it's not below average that's certainly a good thing so the data backs up that maybe they're okay in terms of games missed and salary lost an area you might look at them and go what hold on their cost in the team here is with rest and missing games punting that game against the Milwaukee Bucks what I'll say to that is, you know, that's just sports science in 2022, 2023. You know, it's not necessarily a sign of weakness or anything like that. This is just how the NBA works. There's very few guys that are going to play 82 games. And in fact, people think 82 games is too much for them to play and we need to shorten the season for player health. It's why the, the league has also tried to eliminate back-to-backs and things like that. And why, if the team doesn't make it to Dallas, we might get upset because New Orleans is going to get a rest disadvantage somewhere along the lines probably to make up this game. So Aaron Nelson holding guys out a little bit longer than ideally you would like isn't on the players, that's on the medical staff, but it's backed up in science. I don't know if that's something we can really argue with, especially because we're not sports scientists here and sports doctors and things like that. And so you look at it, I don't know. You know, when you see there's no reoccurrence of these same injuries over and over and over again, maybe that type of approach is actually working. It might cost you a few games here and there, but maybe that approach is actually working. And you can get upset about the rest, but go back to what happened to DeMarcus Cousins a couple of years ago. 
you know, he had just been coming off playing the most minutes in his career over that short stretch of time. And as they've done some studies on that, there's some evidence. I'm not saying it's a full on like correlation to anything, but you can kind of see some of this that maybe there was evidence that Boogie's lack of rest led to that injury. Do you want something like that to happen to one of these players? You rush Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson back. They're not fully there yet, so they're overcompensating. They make a play and something happens because their body's not handling it well. Rest has been one of the most talked about key things in the NBA. Load management for the past couple of years, but it is backed up by science. It might cost you wins here and there. The, the Clippers are a great example of not putting it all together because those guys don't play together because they're just literally taking days off and things like that. But there is science backed up, backing a lot of that up. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you do. There's no right or wrong answer to that. It's just kind of what it is. That's how this goes now. And so I think that's worth keeping in mind too when guys are missing games, when they're sitting and punting on a Bucks game. That's kind of, there's sports science behind it. This is not just, oh, whatever, let's be weak, give them a day off, you know, they're, they're not tough, all that. Now, there's, there's, there's a lot of reasoning and logic backing up most of these decisions and I don't feel like I'm personally in a position to really question all of that given I'm not as nearly as qualified as the people making those ultimate decisions are. So this all leads to kind of an uncomfortable truth, potentially. If you agree with me, if you don't, that's okay too. And let me know in the comments down below on YouTube of what if this is all just bad luck? Maybe it's a voodoo curse. There's the possibility of that. We can't really do a full show on that. Um, but maybe it's just bad luck. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Let's break that part down coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You want to take Luka Dodgers to score more than 26 and a half points, maybe against the Pelicans tonight? Feels like that one could be a good, good chance that that's going to happen. You can. You want to have LeBron James to score more than 27 and a half points against the Lakers or against the Pelicans on Saturday? You can take that one too. You want to have LeBron to have fewer than five and a half assists. You can take that as well because he's probably going to be gunning for points to set the all-time record. That's what prize picks is. It's daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to six players. and If they go score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And the best part is you're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections. You're not doing this against professional gamblers. You know what these players are going to do or not do? Go put some money down on it and use that sports knowledge. And they offer projections on any sport you watch. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. And they currently offer or are operational in over 30 states in Canada. And they offer safe and fast withdrawals. So download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up today and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. You deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget, enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down every single thing you want to know about this team. They're not doing well right now, but we're looking at how they can get better, what it means for this team going forward. We'll look at some more trade targets. You know, probably on Friday, we'll recap the Dallas game if it happens in tomorrow's show we'll go from there but it's going to be a fun time around the trade deadline which is next week and now for your second listen go check out locked on saints ross jackson breaking down all of the prospects from the senior bowl he's live he is there got the inside scoop on everything go give locked on saints a listen now because the saints have some more draft capital after the sean payton trade and today we are talking about injuries with the pelicans particularly how do you talk about talking about injuries it's not an easy thing you know, this happens certain years where injuries are bad and it's like, what's going on? And the answer is we really don't know. The team is never going to be transparent about that, nor should they, right? This is a billion dollar industry where you're trying to kind of get a competitive advantage. You're not going to share that with fans. You don't want that information out. And if that bothers you, I understand it gets annoying at times, but it's just kind of part and parcel with how this works. It's unfortunate, but these things are kind of like kept top secret and that's how it goes. So you're not going to ever get a lot of clarity and truthfulness on things. Maybe BI's injury was worse. You know, I'm going to take them at their word on this and say it wasn't and just kept hurting him. But there's a lot we don't know, which means it's really tough to talk about things. Is Zion 
behind or ahead of schedule. We don't really know. They're telling us it's about right, so that's all we can go on. So when you look at this, I don't think it's just that these guys are injury prone. They've had a season where they played together and played well and played the majority of games. None of these injuries are connected, not one leading to another, not one reoccurring, that it's always the foot, right, or always his knee. And there are different things that happen. So sometimes that just means, and this goes back to something we said in the first segment of today's show, it's just a fluke. And guess what? That sucks. That sucks. And it's derailed and made this season from what was really promising to become a disappointment. And as I've said, I think expectations need to change at times when new circumstances present themselves, when circumstances change, particularly when you lose your two best players for a period of time and one needs a little bit of a ramp up to get back into form. That's going to happen. I think it's all understandable. This team is not underachieving because they're playing poorly while healthy. It's They were playing amazing when healthy, and now they're hurt. I think that if Zion comes back, B.I. will be fine eventually because we know what he's capable of. I'm not really worried about these guys. That's why I'm not worried about this team. Maybe another injury is going to come up. Maybe one of them gets hurt before the end of the season after they come back. You just got to deal with it. It's how it goes. It's part of the NBA. Injuries are the great equalizer in everything. And so... It's natural for us to want to assign blame to things, to want to connect things. Well, it's the medical staff's fault or it's the player's fault. He's weak or, or, or there's a voodoo curse on the team or something like that. But I don't think there is any of that. I think it's just simply bad luck. And that happens. And it feels like it hits New Orleans a whole lot more often than it does other teams. But then you look at the data and that's actually not true. That's kind of confirmation bias coming into play there. We have the numbers on it. It doesn't back all of that up. So what, what, what do you do? Like, how do you deal with it? Well, it goes back to what I said earlier. You know, you go to your partner and you're just like, that sucks. There doesn't need to be solutions to the injuries. There doesn't need to be blame. We can all just be like, this, this blows, right? That's what it is. And retool expectations to maybe make it a little bit easier. You know, I, this season I've kind of accepted, if it keeps going as it is, is going to be a disappointment. I think they will be fine. Not having a top four seed feels like it will be a disappointment given where they were, but that's not the player's fault. That's not David Griffin's fault. That's not the front, you know, the rest of the front office's fault. It's not the med staff's fault. Might be at times Willie Green's fault. There's some blame to put around, but there's not that much. Injuries just happen and they suck. There's not a whole lot else to say with that. And I'm glad they're not reoccurring injuries. And that's why I have hope that these guys will be healthy at the end of the season. That's why I look at this and I'm pretty optimistic about this team when they get healthy because they will, it will be okay. And that's why I think in subsequent seasons, it'll also be okay too. And why I'm also like, hey, look at the salary cap. That stuff's something to really keep in mind unless you think you can go and win a title this year or are worried that you won't make the postseason. You know, maybe there is news that Zion's injury or someone's injury, you know, is worse than it is. But that's not what we're getting right now. So I'm not going to jump to those kind of conclusions. It just means it's really tough to talk about injuries. And I look at this team as they've played. They've been good. I see signs of life from that Denver Nuggets loss. Denver only has four home losses this year. It's not like that was a game that New Orleans should have won no matter what. And they were kind of in it for a while. And you saw signs of life from Brandon Ingram and a lot of these other players. And it means I think they can try and turn this around with the right coaching tweaks. Control the things you can control. You can't control the injuries. You control the rotations, the players you play, the strategy, all of those things. That's what the focus really needs to be on around this team. And hopefully there's enough film from that Denver game to have an idea of what that is. We'll find out, though. If they play in this Dallas game, they're trapped in Denver right now because of snow, ice, ice in Dallas. So they haven't been able to fly in. They're going to try and fly in Thursday morning today, depending on when you're listening to this. That's much better than flying to OKC and taking a four-hour bus ride to the game. That sounds terrible. The Houston Rockets a couple of years ago had to take a bus down from Baton Rouge when they couldn't stay in New Orleans. And it was like an hour and a half, two hours. And they were wrecked, hated it from being on a bus. It just doesn't work with those NBA bodies, I guess. So flying day of, go play the game, get back to New Orleans, and just kind of move on from, from that whole weird situation. But of course, there's always something, right? But hopefully the game gets played and we can watch the game and maybe the Pelicans don't run the losing streak up to 10. We'll see. 
Luka Doncic is pretty good. But as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow to recap the game.